Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Raising the Curtain. Today, I am here with director Jason Vales of the upcoming production of Clyde's by Lynn Nottage, happening at Heartland Theatre Company. How are you today? I am very good. It's great to be here. Good. I'm so excited to have you. I personally am a real big fan of this show, so I'm excited to talk about it. Awesome. But before we kind of delve into Clyde's, who's Jason? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Jason Vales is a... Um, Started off as a child actor, um, did some television commercials as a kid, um, moved to a small town in Peru, Illinois, um, and continued to act, um, mostly doing um, musicals like Shenandoah, Sound of Music. Um, and then right around high school, I kind of got tired of playing Shenandoah, where <laughs> I was playing a slave repeatedly. So I asked my teacher if I could um, direct something that I had written and that kind of took me down the directing path um, I did like the fact that I was able to write a story and then see it to completion and also act in it so that sparked um, my storytelling um, path and from there I went to college continuing theater um, went to Columbia College went to Studio Z Digital Theater. Um, basically, when you're at Columbia, you do a lot of working in the community. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of stage managing for Goodman, a lot of stage managing for Steppenwolf, um, assistant directing on a play called BS, um, which was a pretty hit um, improv comedy up in Chicago. And, you know, th from there, it just kind of became something that I wanted to do um, a little bit more than a hobby um, my overall dream is to have my own theater company yeah. and to uh, tell stories by new and emerging African American playwrights and um, surround myself with creative people of like minded and and really just kind of dig into new things new spaces when I was in Chicago I fell in love with improvisation as well as this thing called digital theater mm -hmm. which is something that w it opens up your playwriting a bit because in the background can be Washington DC and then the next scene can be you can be on Mars um, yeah. so it was basically done with rear screen projection so my my directing vision is really visual and it's very steeped in improvisation um, which is why um, I was very excited to direct this particular play. Yeah, excellent. So how did you find your way to Heartland? Well, last year I did the 10 Minute Play Festival, yes. um, which I can't say enough about that. That, that, that is like amazing. You mm -hmm. get to work with so many different directors and work on plays that are brand new and really just kind of collab with a lot of different people here at Heartland. Through that process, I really liked Reese and Gail yeah. and I like the space and I love the space <laughs> yes so I really just wanted to be a part of it in any way that I could I found out they were doing a Lynn Nottage play didn't even know which one it was mm -hmm. just said okay just please um, if I can be a part of it in any way I would love to um, I have an association with a lot of the actors through theater school mm -hmm. um, that was a theater company downtown Bloomington I directed plays for them. I was production director for them. So oh, okay. I really have a connection with some of the actors that have gone through Heartland. And they kept telling me throughout the years, hey, you got to get on board with the 10-minute play festival. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm so glad I did. And that brought me to Clyde's. I love that. So tell us a little bit about the show. Okay. Um, I feel like a lot of people, when they hear Lynn Nottage, they automatically go to sweat. Yes. Um, so <laughs> yeah, course. what's Clyde's about? I mean, it, a brief synopsis is, um, it, for me, it's about three formerly incarcerated individuals who got a job at a diner, um, and basically this diner was the only place that would employ them. Um, as with all formerly incarcerated people, they're kind of at the mercy of whatever job they can get. And they happen to have a very, very cruel and mean boss named Clyde, um, who also has her own demons. Mm -hmm. Um, but really, she just lacks empathy for those three. And so throughout the process of them working in that diner, they meet what's kind of like a mentor in Montrellis, and he encourages them. Um, he helps them build sandwiches. Mm -hmm. um, he helps them understand that their dreams are attainable. 
Um, and throughout the yin and yang of those two, um, you get the stories of these three in formerly incarcerated people. And my goal in the play was to bring an African-American perspective to it. And what I mean by that is that I didn't want these characters to be caricatures. I wanted them right. to not have stereotypes. Um, we don't always talk in slang, and we don't always portray ourselves in negative lights. Sure. Um, so it was very important for me that anybody that brought any kind of fake slang to it, we didn't cast. Um, it's very, this is how black people are. Mm -hmm. And there's one white character in it. Yeah. And for me, that white character represents the audience. Um, because I'm going to say that a lot of Heartland's crowd is white. Yeah. And therefore, there's going to be one character that they empathize with. So it was very important that that character be very broad, be mm -hmm. very, um, the things you say, you that you don't say out loud but are in the back of your mind. He kind of represents that. Um, and then you have the rest of the people, Raphael, who's who's a Latin American, um, and then you have Montrellas, who's African American, Letitia, who's African American, and Clyde, who's African American. Um, but it was very important that we don't put on stereotypes in these characters because it's my feeling that when you do that, you separate yourself from the audience, mm -hmm. and then the audience doesn't have the ability to empathize in the way that I think they should in a play like this. Um, so that's, to me, the vision of what we're trying to do. We're really just trying to get people to empathize with characters they don't normally associate with. Excellent. Um, and the sandwiches are a metaphor for dreams. Mm -hmm. um, I know me personally, when I'm depressed, it's mostly because I have nothing to look forward to. Yeah. Um, nothing to hope for, nothing to dream for. Um, and those sandwiches represent that. Excellent. Can you talk a little bit about um, your, like, directing style in the rehearsal process? Mm -hmm. um, is it, like, a lot of character work? Do you mainly focus on blocking? What's that kind of like? My process is really um, grounded in the actor, mm -hmm. and I really look at what the actor brings to the table. Um, it's very – we don't block initially. Right. Um, what we do is we do what's called hot seat, which is character work and we try to get in the head of the character. Mm -hmm. And I try to get the actors to understand what their characters would and they wouldn't do, okay? But I also want the, char the actors to know that I cast them because I saw the character within them. Sure. So I still want that mm -hmm. in that, okay? So I want them to be able to think like the character, behave like the character. There's a lot of, would your character really do that? Mm -hmm. Would your character really do that? And by doing that, it's kind of it kind of becomes subconscious, and then they're like, okay, I don't do this, but Raphael does. I don't do this, but Letitia does. And then all of a sudden, they start bringing themselves into the character, and then you get a full fledged character. But you have to understand where this character is coming from. We do some improv work. Um, what happened in the scene before the scene? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how will we improv to get to this scene? Okay, scene three. What happened before scene three? Was there a talk between Clyde and Montrellis? What was that talk like? Go. You know, and there's a very, very organic way. Um, when we block, I just say, okay, I need you guys to be making sandwiches. Mm -hmm. How would Letitia do this? So throughout that process, I am able to see how the actor interprets Letitia and what she uses. And for me, I'm more like a conductor. Mm -hmm. um, if they're playing the wrong note, I'm going to let them know. If they're out of sequence or the blocking doesn't look right or they're not being shown to the audience, I'm going to tell them. But I really want the actor's instinct to carry them. Um, and because of that, I feel that the play is very good at th these actors listening to each other, constantly making eye t contact with each other and being very grounded in each other. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell them, don't look at the director. The only person you have to impress is your scene partner. The Absolutely. only person you have to to get your objective out of is your partner. And so there's a very, very open and loose. But now we're at the point of blocking. We're at the point of almost stress rehearsal. So I am more, okay, don't do that. Or right. hey, let's do this. <laughs> um, and really what I do is just put myself in the mind of the audience. 
Excellent. So kind of in that same vein, when it comes to like the directing and the positioning, Heartland has a very unique space, smaller, <laughs> yes. your, the audience is right on top of the action. What is it like for you directing in a space that is so intimate and making sure, you know, all of the action can be seen? I got to see a sneak peek of the set and it looks really cool. Yes, yes. Um, but what, how's that been for you? It's a challenge. Um, I'm not going to lie about that. The, the hardest part of the Heartland stage is the fact that the three sides are very open. Mm -hmm. um, so there, if you're, you can't just play to the front. You have to play to both sides, three mm -hmm. sides of the room. And so sometimes that's a challenge in the sense of there's a lot of work being done on cooking that needs to be done frontal. But I always have to be conscious of, okay, what are they seeing on the side view? Because when it comes to a play like this where there's a lot of moving parts, mm -hmm. I always t tell the actors you got to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time because you have to be able to give a monologue almost while making a sandwich and cutting lettuce and cutting onions. So it's a very – you have to be very um, tuned into what you're doing and you have to be very conscious of what you're doing because you're working with knives and food right. and things of that nature. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's the biggest challenge. Now, what I – do like about it is the fact that it's an intimate space mm -hmm. and the acting doesn't have to be as big we can be subtler with our actions we don't have to constantly project as much as we would in a larger space um, so there's an intimacy to that that I like and it really works well with Jason's character when he's um, rung tight and trying to get his story out there's some very small moments in, in, in his dialogues that really cater to the space it really works for the space it's very intimate in that nature so awesome so you had kind of mentioned it when you were talking about your vision and everything but why do you think it is important that we do shows like Clyde's in um whether it just be purely at Heartland Theater or within the entire theater community of Central Illinois Bloomington Normal yeah I mean the first thing I think of is is as a playwright myself it's getting that work out there mm -hmm. it's getting um work of women work of latin latin americans uh, african americans out there because um i feel like theater's tradition is steeped in please forgive me older white men's stories i completely agree with that and i feel like the more of these stories that are told and the more that audience can empathize with characters like these the more chance that these stories are going to get to be told. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's fear, one, and hey, can we get an all-black cast? Mm -hmm. or, or how will our audience feel about this? I feel like we don't give our audience enough credit. Sure. You, you, they're okay with being challenged. Mm -hmm. I think there's this thing with theater that people don't understand, and it's uh, pe people watch TV series, uh, movies, all kinds of things with all kinds of people of color. Why doesn't that exist more often in theater? Absolutely. I mean, there's no difference between watching a hit show with a lead character that's black and going to a local theater and seeing a lead actor that's black. Mm -hmm. There's no difference. It's entertainment either way. Yeah. And I feel like we need to be used to that. We, we're we breaking open in spaces of film and television, and we need to do that more in theater. Um, it doesn't have to be whitewashed. We don't always have to tell an Ibsen story. Oh, no. There, there is something about Lynn, Lynn Nottage's work. There's, and, and then there's black playwrights out there that literally don't get discovered until they die. Mm -hmm. And that's a shame. Absolutely. Because, and it's only because there's so many theater companies recycling the same old stories, mm -hmm. and it gets so repetitive. It does. So for me, doing this play was all about opening the door and letting people know that hey these stories not only can be told but these stories relate to you as well because we're all Americans mm -hmm. we all share this experience whether we accept it or whether we don't accept it and we should be able to empathize with anybody of any color any race any sex we should be able to say okay I can put myself in that person's shoes um, and again it's just about opening the door and opening minds to new stories yeah do you think any of that has to do with maybe a sort of fear that the audience or the theater in general might have of like when we're watching these stories on a screen 
we have that separation. Right. But as soon as it's in front of our faces, are we worried that it's going to make people uncomfortable? Are we worried that they're going to be like, oh, no, I can't be that close to a subject like that? Right. Um, that's personally how I feel, but I'm curious if you think that has anything to do with it. I actually do. Um, the one thing that I've always believed in theater since I've been acting since five is um, – the role of theater, in my opinion, is to make you uncomfortable. It is to yes. make you think. It is to make you squirm a bit and make you think about things that you wouldn't normally think about. Mm -hmm. To me, that's what theater began as. So, you know, there probably is a level of being uncomfortable with being that close to people of color or, or whatever. But I think it's more this weird tradition of theater that we – think theater is one way and we think it looks a certain way and sounds a certain way and people act a certain way that really closes people off to the new theater mm -hmm. to new works to new ways of acting to new ways of telling a story that to me more than making people uncomfortable is just the unwillingness for people to change the unwillingness for people to open their minds and challenge what they think theater is mm -hmm. because it's really not just one thing. Now I know that this theater Heartland theater has, they do a certain type of work mm -hmm. and I feel like them seeing something like this play just basically lets them know, Hey, this can be done. And Hey, can we do more stories like that? Because you know what? I did feel something about those characters. I did feel something about that story. And I, I hope that, informs them in the future so yeah and i think that's great that heartland is doing this um another local theater did a lynn nottage play yes. last year mm -hmm. um they did sweat and i i think it's really good for the community and other theaters to see like okay we see heartland doing things Absolutely. out of their wheelhouse community players doing stuff out of their wheelhouse we can now start to do stuff out of our wheelhouse 100 percent. and when we're looking at shows for you know bipoc actors or women playwrights it's I got I just got done interviewing um, the director of Coalescence's upcoming project of Panther Women. Ah, nice. And I feel like everyone just associates if you want to see something like that, you got to go to Coalescence. You know that's true. I've heard of that. Yeah, but it's like it, Coalescence does other stuff. Yes, Heartland does stuff like this. Community right. players does stuff like this. Right. Um. So I know I was very excited when I oh, saw absolutely. it on Heartland season. Absolutely. So I think Lynn Nod are just fabulous. She is. So she's excellent. So um, when does the show open? April 4th here at uh, Heartland Theater. Perfect. And it runs all the way until uh, the last show is the 20th of April. So it runs every weekend um, except the last weekend of April. Perfect. Um, and is it 2 o'clock matinee, 7.30 evening shows, I yes. believe? There's Excellent. only a matinee, I believe, twice. I think you're right. Yes, there's a matinee on two occasions, I believe. Actually, you know what? There's only one. On the 20th. There's two shows on the 20th. Two shows on the 20th. Yes. Perfect. Um, yeah. Look at that. Two performances on 420. We have it right in front of us. Absolutely. We're gonna <laughs> That's so, crazy. <laughs> all right. Anything else you'd like to add about the show, Jason? Like just your feelings on it? You know, your cast? Anything like that? Um, I, I do have a phenomenal cast. Um, I will say that we did start looking for this cast about a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, one of the challenges with doing plays of people of color is finding people of color yeah. that know that we're doing a show that they can participate mm -hmm. in. Um, and so we went out to the culture fest. We went out to Juneteenth festival and we were handing out, Hey, we're doing a Lynn Nottage festival. Yeah. And so for me, that helped me get the cast that I have. Um, and I really felt that it was important to um, be able to cast the play mm -hmm. in the right way and not substitute any character with no. anybody else of a different race. Um, yeah. So for me, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of my cast for stepping up and being interested a year ago and then coming back Still, for the auditions. Yeah. I really thank them for that. So Yeah, that was, that was a good point, and I didn't even think to ask that, is kind of back to this whole concept of fear of doing it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of theaters are like, I don't think I can cast this show. Right. Because we typically don't have people of color or people of this or people of that right. to come and audition for these shows. So can we risk it? Right. Um, but I think what you said was fantastic. You know, start searching a year in advance. You have to. 
Um, the, because because yeah. the actors need to know that these stories are out there mm-hmm. and they're being a show out there that they can be a part yeah. of. And you have to show up. Mm-hmm. You have to s- – where, where are these people? Where could they possibly be? Yeah. Let's bring Heartland there. Let's tell them we're doing this play. And let's see what happens. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. This is kind of funny. The hardest part to cast in this play – was Jason the one white character? Yeah, and I, <laughs> I I can see that, and I know, um, I mean I can't speak from like personal experience, but just from stories I've heard is people almost get scared to audition for right. shows like this right. because we're like, oh, I'm gonna be the one white person auditioning. Right. This is weird. Weird, yes. And it's like, but I love what you said in the beginning about that's giving the audience someone else to empathize with. 100%. Yeah, and you need that. You know, and and it's it's a weird thing about directing that a lot of directors don't talk about, mm-hmm. but it's 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 knowing who your audience is and in a way subverting that through the story and using their I don't want to say racism, but using um, their view and and of stereotypes mm-hmm. against them, and to show them, hey, it's really not what I thought it was, um, and it takes that a step beyond, hey, I have a black friend. It's it's right in front of you. Yeah. It's visceral. It's right in your face. So. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jason. Everyone go check out Clyde's at Heartland Theater Company opening April 4th. Um, check out their website for ticket details. So thank you so much. I, I, I mean, I've said this like eight times in this <laughs> interview, but Clyde's is one of my favorite Lynn Nodded shows. So I'm very excited awesome. to come see it. But thank you so much for doing this and good luck with the rest of your rehearsals. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Of course.